guys. Uh, welcome to Allied Arts Gallery. Welcome to the show, Melodic Voices. Um, I'm here with my friends Kayla and Lisa, and they will be sharing some poems for you guys. Um, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about the gallery. This is Allied Arts Gallery, the gallery at the park. We're located right next to Howard Amon Park, and right now it's open on Tuesday through Saturday, uh, noon to four. So come on down, you can see the whole show. But uh, to get started on this part, it is Make It Plain Part Two. Uh, the first body of artwork about 10 years ago was Make It Plain, the first one, and it used the story on, it, it used black history to explain why we have a need for the black church in America. And so this one, uh, we went, my husband and I spent last fall in Richmond, Virginia, and this, when we got back in January, I really wanted to do another version of show responding to black history in the South and my old work on. But then, it, COVID happened and a bunch of stuff and it led to where I was able to have a show here. And so this one takes you through the process of lament and mourning. Uh, it, it does use the Bible, so we'll talk about God and spiritual things a lot during this. Um, but it takes you through the process of lament and mourning, and then there will be protest and praise and several different aspects to that process. Um, so, let me talk first about I'll, um, I'll talk about a couple pieces. There's a painting, a book, and then we'll do some songs and we'll talk a little bit more. Um, but this piece is named A Monument, and uh, Monticello is Jefferson's estate. While we were there, we explored the slave quarters where Jefferson's 600 slaves lived. We also learned about the Hemings family and Sally Hemings, Jefferson's favorite slave family. Sally Hemings um, had her first baby fathered by Jefferson at the age of 14 or 15, and she later had six more of his children. Uh, five, sorry, I believe five more of his children. Um, Jefferson's slaves built his house and sustained the property, and the, the people he owned were worth more than his 50,000 acres at one point. So that's, that's a lot of people. Um, and though Jefferson accomplished some great things, he did so with the help of over 600 people working through labor. And so that's, uh, the, the lamenting is something it takes we have to address these tough things and work through them and process them. And so we're gonna be kind of honest here. So that's, um, that's a bit of that honesty. But um, after we went to Monticello, we went to DC and saw the Jefferson Monument there. And I had a really hard time with it. All I could see were Jefferson's slaves at the bottom of the statue. And so, um, so this painting, it represents those slaves working in his fields and and they were literally, so I think it's important that Jefferson did great things, but he was literally sustained by free labor. And that's, um, this painting shows the great thing, the greatness of him as a monument, but also the, the hard truth behind it. And we'll talk about another man who was a great man, did some great things, but also had did some hard, bad things too. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the second piece I wanna introduce first is a book, it's titled Hold On. And it is a slave song, and the book has the lyrics in it. So if you come down to the gallery, you can look a little bit closer at this book. If I'm here, I can flip through it with you guys. But um, yeah, Kayla and Lisa are going to go ahead and sing a song in this, this book is named after. If you want to get to heaven, I'll tell you how. Keep your hand on that bow. Keep your hand on that bow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on that bow. 
starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way and who shall wear the starry crown good lord show me the way um this next song that we're going to sing um, is amazing grace which was written in 1772 by a man named john newton the lyrics are written out of his personal life experience at a young age he joined the royal navy and then later became the master of a slave ship where he kidnapped people from their homes in Africa and sailed them back to England to sell them as slaves. In 1748, there was an extremely violent storm which marked his spiritual conversion. However, he continued to work as a slave trader. But God is patient and faithfully works in our hearts. God worked in Newton's heart and in about 1755, he ended his sea life altogether and went on to study Christian theology and later became a clergyman. And ultimately, he worked to stop slavery in England and was a strong influencer on William Wilberforce, who was the leader of the abolition movement. The lyrics of Amazing Grace show the powerful and redemptive work God can do in the hearts of those who turn to him. It shows how we can find forgiveness for all the wrong we have done through Jesus, regardless of our past. This man, John Newton, brought many, many people from Africa and sold them as property. But because of the amazing grace of God, his life was changed and God used him to end a horrible practice in England. John Newton's story is a powerful testimony to the redemptive work God can do.
was uh, that was amazing. So, uh, let me breathe real quick. <laughs> uh, so we've remembered the past. We've talked about change, and now I want to introduce you to my all-time favorite person in history, uh, Maggie Lena Walker. So. Maggie was born of a freed slave and was the first black woman to, uh, to charter a bank in the US. She was the second woman to do this. These two paintings are of young Maggie Walker looking up at the building that she would one day own uh, on Broad Street, the main street in Richmond, Virginia, the capital of the Confederacy. Uh, the other painting is of her as a bank president in the same fashion that many white bank presidents had of the day. And you can see that it's uh, my stylized version of her in that uh, portrait style. Uh, but this story gets better. Uh, Walker not only established a bank, she also ran a newspaper, opened a general store, employed many African American women, spoke publicly, raised a family as a single mother after her husband was tragically shot, was a school teacher, and advocated for people with disabilities. She employed more black women than anybody else, any other business at that time. She owned more store space on the main street in Richmond than is currently black owned today. And her newspaper was responsible for boycotting and shutting down the Richmond bus system. On. And Maggie Walker did all of this, like I said, in the capital city of the Confederacy, Richmond, Virginia. On during the time period of Jim Crow and Reconstruction. So not, uh, not only all that, but her funeral was the largest ever in Richmond, Virginia. Yes, it was larger than General Robert E. Lee. So uh, since we are talking about, we'll, go, we'll talk a little bit more about her in a bit, but um, since we're talking about change and a really inspirational woman, I think it's time to sing another song about hope. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. or the two favorite things about her that make her my favorite person. Um, 
The first of those two things is that she was known for uniting black leaders from a variety of backgrounds during the famous Harlem Renaissance time period. Her home was located right in the middle of one of America's Black Wall Streets and the Harlem of the South, which means that um, she would have Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois and Marcus Garvey and all these people that we hear these names, she was friends with all of them and they all hung out with her and talked about some of the same things we're talking about, Black Lives Matter, all of these topics on. And, and these people, if you know Black history, they butted heads a lot, they didn't agree on a lot. And yet she was able to have all of them together. And so I think, um, I personally love the idea of bringing different people groups together, whether it's religions or belief systems or races. Um, I, I really admire her ability to do that. And she also did it in the realms of race as well. Um, where she, with being a bank owner, she was working and learning from wealthy white bank owners. And so um, in a time period and a place where this just doesn't happen. So. Uh, she's an incredibly inspiring woman for that reason. And the final thing, though, that I really like about her is that she was a devout Christian. Her faith carried through with everything she did. Um, and you can see she always wore the same necklace. If you look up photos of her, Maggie Lena Walker, you can see the necklace in a lot of them. Um, and that her faith guided her through everything that she did. And even her last words were, have faith, have hope, and carry on, which are in the bottom of this one. On. So, I, yeah, I want to thank you guys for joining us. And if if this is the first time you've ever walked through this process of lament, where you focus on the hard things and you're real about it, and then you go through change and and talking about through the change, the hard thing through that, and then remembering the good and the beautiful things that are present in whether it's Black culture or in your own life, um, I, I encourage you to do that and think about Maggie Walker too, and and how you can bring different people together and be a part of that solution. Um, and so I'm gonna do a quick thank you at the end. So thank you guys so much. Um, thank you, Tina. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you to our husbands that are here and the gallery workers. <laughs> um, and so uh, if you guys wanna come check out the show, it's up at Allied Arts from um, Tuesday through Saturday, open from noon until four to the end of October. So come on down. I'll be here tomorrow from one until three about um, and so, yeah, come on down, come check out the show. And thank you guys for joining us.